Hello everybody, my name is Steve Tansy, I work for Les Mills UK, I'm the Head of Research and Development and unfortunately for you, the marketing team have insisted that you see my face. So you'll be watching me for the next 20-25 minutes, thank you very much for uh, coming along and registering on this. Um, I hope that it's useful and I think that there should be some really good key takeouts and I'd like to encourage questions as we go through this. So um, you can write notes, take questions uh, for the end. I think that Charlotte will probably stop me if you type too many questions in the, in the box, uh, which you'll see in front of you, um, because you, know, you, you might need answers to questions that are more applicable at a certain time within the presentation and that's absolutely fine. So, welcome everybody. Let's start with the objectives. So, the objectives for this session are, number one is to be able to recognize the common technical faults within Les Mills programs. That's quite hard to do because there's so many of them, but we're also going to look at analyzing squat pattern, which is also known as triple extension, which is the extension of your hip, your knee, and your ankle at the same time something that we use in all of the programs, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. We're also gonna look at the ability to apply corrective exercise solutions to keep you moving safely. Now, we really care about instructors as a company, I know I certainly do, um, and it's really important that we actually stay safe in our own movement. So I'd just like to frame this session. This session is for you. It isn't for you to go to your participants, if you are indeed a, a Lesmos instructor, and to apply this to them, it's for you to apply to yourself, okay? So let's start off with what a muscle imbalance is. It sounds um, a little bit technical. So it's the neuromuscular skeletal con uh, condition where some muscles become short, which is overactive or facilitated, and others become long or underactive or inhibited. So it's where the body attempts to compensate for the imbalance and this can cause an impairment in the movement or even a movement dysfunction. Okay, so that's what a muscle imbalance is. We all know that it's important to stretch, um, but there are other contributing factors. So if we're looking at a muscle imbalance, there are, there are only three things that can be going wrong. So if someone's moving incorrectly, if you're moving incorrectly, if there's a problem with your posture, it's one of three things. It's either tightness, weakness or motor pattern a motor pattern is um well i'm going to explain it on the slide in a minute anyway but it's just how you perceive your movement and how you fire your muscles in a certain sequence so if we start off with tightness we all know what tightness is but tightness is actually when a muscle is shorter and rest than normal um, this isn't good uh, so it doesn't lengthen sufficiently and it can actually alter a joint's position so if we alter a joint's position, if it's pulled over more to one side than the other, that's actually really bad because um, this can reduce the range of movement due to the resistance it applies to the opposing muscle that's trying to pull the joint. And they call this reciprocal inhibition of the functional agonist. That doesn't matter, but if we apply it to your programs, that really does matter. So for example, if you are doing any sort of leg uh, exercise in body attack where you're lifting the uh, leg up through the center line or in body combat where you're lifting the leg up through the center line. If you've got a really tight hamstring, you're basically working with a resistance that other people without a tight hamstring wouldn't have. Hence the workout is gonna be a lot harder for you. So if you are living and existing in a body where there are certain tightnesses, it's almost like trying to do body attack or body combat underwater or with some sort of elastic band holding you down. Weakness is, is different. So weakness, uh, but weakness and tightness are actually quite interrelated. So weakness inhibits or delays the activation of a muscle. So if a muscle is weak, it can actually stop you from moving it properly and throughout the full range of movement, but also it can stop the activation of a muscle. So the inability to fire fast to it quickly. Both long and short muscles can develop a weakness. And this is the interesting bit, right? So weakness can lead to neurological tightness as a possible protection mechanism. So if you watch my hands, if my muscles are weak, 
they're, if, they're, if they're weak, they're much more likely to, as I try and stretch, to stop the stretch from happening because they know if they're weak and they get pulled apart too much that they're going to tear. So weakness can actually lead to tightness, and a lot of people don't know that, but it's because they don't train their hamstrings is why their hamstrings have actually become very tight. It might not just be because they haven't actually lengthened them. So structurally short muscles, tight, can cause reciprocal inhibition of the opposing muscle as well, we know as weakness. The last thing is motor patterns. So the brain and the muscles connect through a neuromuscular pathway. This, base, this is simple, neuromuscular pathway. Okay, so um, that, that's how we connect with all the muscles within our body. And the way that we know where our muscles are in space and time, like for example, if I shut my eyes and do this with my fingers, I know I'm doing that with my fingers because of my proprioception. Now, proprioception affects how we move and how we prevent uh, the desired range of movement of an angle of a, or a joint. So if I want to squat down to 90 degrees, I now know where 90 degrees is because of my proprioception. I don't have to see that in a mirror. Muscles that don't fire in sequence can increase risk of injury as it forces the body to create habits that can be damaging to its framework. I think we'd all agree there. So those three things are really important. And now we've got those under our belt. What can we do about it? I'll just let you run your eyes across this exercise continuum. So this is a corrective exercise continuum. We've got inhibit, lengthen, activate, and integrate. And these are the things that we need to be able to do. Now, I'm pretty sure that you all know about lengthening and activation. So lengthening is, is all about either static stretches or act, active stretching or neuromuscular stretching. So a, a type of stretching that I'd really advocate that you do and look up is called proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretches. Now, they're amazing. So imagine if you're stretching, for example, your hamstring. You need a partner to do this, but you stretch your hamstring. You then tense against your partner as hard as you can and they push down against your hamstring trying to move you backwards for five seconds but they don't move you so it's called an isometric contraction after five seconds you both relax at the same time and this tricks the muscles into thinking that they're no longer tense which actually allows them to lengthen further that's a really great way to stretch and we know about activation because activation is positional isometrics and isolated strengthening so for example how can we fire the rhomboids, which are the muscles in the middle of your upper back, when we're doing a row? We can actually get people to pull their shoulder blades back together. So we can do positional isometrics by getting someone to lie on the bench and actually try and pull their elbows backwards while they're lying on a bench while someone tries to push the elbows forwards with an equal and opposite force. Now, the two that you might not be familiar with are these two, which is inhibit and integrate. Okay, so the big secret with this one was a tight or overused dormant muscle can inhibit themselves. So that means if your muscle, uh, so for example, your quad or your hamstring are really tight, they might need self myofascial release in order to be able to undo them. So that is a pressure which we can apply using a foam roller or other types of uh, fascial release balls in order to be able to allow that muscle to lengthen further. Integration is different, and this is to promote high levels of intramuscular coordination to reestablish postural control. So muscle functions in the proper length tension relationship. So this is about actually integrating um, different types of resistance into a movement pattern to ensure that your muscles are all firing as they should. And the one which always springs to mind is putting an elastic band around your knees when you're doing squats to provide an inward tension. And that inward tension forces your glutes, um, your glute needs to fire uh, and, and your VMO. And these muscles are usually quite weak in a lot of people. So triple extension, all the programs, let's talk about it. So your programs, right? So maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you don't squat, maybe you don't lift, but there's something for everybody. So where else do we use it? Triple extension, the extension of the ankle, the knee and the hip. In body step, it's using every step and proportion of the box. CX works, wood chops, squats and knee lifts. So you look at your program now. I'm not going to go for them all, but look at your programs that you teach. Uh, all the programs that you're involved in 
and think about where you actually use this movement because it's it's common it's a common way to exercise we always bend and extend the leg so that's why this presentation is applicable to everybody in body pump the one which was missing we actually do it in tracks one two four seven and eight so now we know why it's so important and we know that there are some there's something that we can do about it let's actually start to look at a way that we can test to see if we do have any postural imbalances in our body the first one is the overhead squat test okay so as you can see here the feet need to be underneath the hips it's essentially a squat but you try and keep the hands above your head and you're squat, squatting your bum down as low as you possibly can before your hips start to scoot under, which is what we call a butt wink. So something for you to try at home is 15 times overhead squat. So you do five from the front with a uh, camera, five from the side and five from the rear, filming yourself and then watch it back to check for these things. So you're checking for any of these things here so this is kind of a summary of the things that we're going to go through now so the first thing if you look up on the top left is actually the toes turning out or the heels lifting and this is one of the the things which happens a lot to members in classes and sometimes to instructors is we actually have the toes turn out when we do squats um and when we do any other type of uh explosive exercise so uh, another thing for you to remember here is every olympic lift mimics a vertical jump every olympic lift so think about it, any squat any snatch any clean they all mimic a vertical jump so whenever you've got a, a vertical jump that you're doing in exercise as well this is all applicable too so do your toes turn out or your heel rise before you jump when you're not trying to so what could be tight and overactive would be your gastric soleus, your lateral bicep femoris, your tensor fascia lata, or your adductor. The weak and underactive muscles would be your medial gastrocnemius, medial hamstring, glute medius, and maximus. Now, if you don't know the muscles, that's okay. I've prepared something just for you. So where are you tight and overactive? Here. Where are you weak? Where are you likely to be weak? So it could be one or the other. It could be tightness, but it could be weakness, or it might be both, or it could be motor pattern. But if it's weakness, you could be weak here. Okay, so what's the corrective exercise solutions to stop your toe turning out or your heel lifting? We need to inhibit using the foam roller so as you can see here these are the areas that you would need to inhibit to lengthen you can see at the top there we're doing an adductor stretch at the top hip flexors and then we're doing the bicep femoris down the bottom by extending the hamstring with a circumduction of the of the exterior leg over the top of the body we can activate using the glute meds by doing leg lifts in a prone position and we can integrate by putting an elastic band around the legs and then doing side walks or putting an elastic band around the knees and doing squats. Say for example you had a hip imbalance and excessive forward lean. Right? So a hip imbalance could be I've got too much of a lordotic spine or a kyphotic spine. So is it, you know the first picture that you can see there is where we've got um, hyperextension and then hyperflexion of the spine. So how do we deal with those things? If we've got an excessive forward lean, it could be that the overactive muscle groups are the soleus, the gastrocnemius, and the hip flexors, so they need to be stretched. The underactive muscles, they're the ones that need to be made stronger, so you'd need to work in the gym are the anterior tibialis, which is the front of the shins, the glute max, we all know what that is, and the erector spinae, which is the muscle which runs up and down the spine, as the name suggests.
Okay, this one. Um, if we have a quick look at the lumbar extension, so hip flexors, erector spinae, and latissimus dorsi. These are the ones that are um, most. So if you've got a, a spine kind of like a belly dancer, you know, where you're very kind of posture upright, but there's a curve at the bottom of your spine, that could be that your overactive muscle groups are your hip flexors, erector spinae, latissimus dorsi. Underactive is your glute max, so we need to work the glutes more your intrinsic core, and your transverse abdominis. Lumbar flexion, so I actually, my pelvis is tilting backwards, so I've got a bit of a rounding going on in my spine. We need to, we need to lengthen the hamstrings, adductors, magnus, uh, and the rectum abdominis in the external obliques, and then the underactive muscles, the ones that I need to strengthen are my glute max. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of problem with the glutes and the back for these particular exercises in terms of weakness. So then they all kind of line up. The corrective exercise solutions, we can inhibit here the hip flexor, lengthen the, uh, the rectus abdominis, as you can see, is lying over the ball there and the hip flexor. And then we, he's actually doing another form of hip flexor stretch at the bottom there to lengthen. Uh, with a twist as well to work on the multidifidus. We've got uh, glute extensions down across the ball for activate, and we've also got something called eyes wise or T raises on the ball. That's where we lie over the ball and we lift the arms over the head, or so that was an I, this is a Y, and this is a T raise. I don't know if you can see my arms, the camera's really small. Um, and then integrate, we've actually got lying against the wall with a ball squat with the band applying a resistance on the way in. Maybe your arms fall forwards, so how can we correct that? If the arms start to fall forward when you do this exercise, it's usually a tight or overactive muscle. The latissimus dorsi needs to be stretched, the teres major, subscapularis and the pectoralis major, but the weak muscles could be the posterior rotator cuff, rhomboids, middle and lower trapezius. All right, so if we look at the tighter overactive muscles, they're here. And now the underactive muscles, they're here. So we can see front and back, kind of makes sense. What do you need to do? You need to stretch the front of your body and you need to strengthen the back of your body. Why? Because we live in a forwardly flexed, addicted uh, society, don't we? We all sit down for far too long. That's why we're all gonna end up looking like T-Rexes unless we do more back work. So corrective exercise solutions, what can we do for it? We can inhibit the rhomboids and the latissimus dorsi using the foam roller. We need to stretch, um, we need to stretch the pectoralis major uh, and lengthen the, uh, the lats as well, which is why he's got his hand across the chair there. We can do the eyes, Ys and T raises for this as well to activate the muscles in the back. And also you can see down there when he's doing the cable pull down, he's actually activating his latissimus dorsi as well and his rhomboids if he's squeezing his shoulder blade backwards. Um, and then integrate, as you can see there, there's a shoulder exercise there for the posterior delt. Right, how are we doing so far? Has anyone written any questions yet? So, no, we don't have any questions coming through. So you're fine to carry on unless anybody wants to ask any questions now okay so that was the overhead squat another uh, type of check which a lot of physiotherapists do is is the single leg squat um, we do this in strength and conditioning uh, coaching as well the single leg squat is to test for an imbalance in the leg so something for you to try at home 10 times single leg squats five on the left from the front and five from the right from the front so you're filming from the front so the film camera facing you and then watch it back to check this this is what you're looking for so you're looking for good alignment and poor alignment poor alignment that's indicative of a lot of society so the knee wants to fall inwards that's because their glute usually isn't firing properly or it could be a tightness on the inside of the leg so let's have a look at it in more detail so what we call knee valgus that's when the knees naturally fall in. When you walk behind some people, 
um, you know, in the city centre, I always see people that are walking with knee valgus. Their knees are falling inwards. Now, people always complain about knee joints. They always say, oh, my knees are bad. Your knees are never bad. There's nothing wrong with your knees. It's either your ankle or your hip joint, which is a problem. Either, you, you know, the muscles in and around the leg are pulling the knee out of alignment from the hip joint or the ankle's not lining up properly with the floor for whatever reason. Um, maybe we've got an eversion or an inversion of the foot and that is actually causing the knee to not, to not bend and extend as it should. And that's why people say I've got a bad knee. It's not the knee though. So let's have a look at it. We've already gone through the toes turning out. Let's go for the knee valgus motion now. So what is tight and overactive? Tight and overactive is the adductor complex, which is the inside of the leg, the bicep, the bicep femoris, which is the, the short head of the hamstring, the TFL, tensor fascia lata, the lateral gastric nemus, and the vastus lateralis. Now, those are all these muscles. So there's the tensor fascia lata. That's the one that we haven't actually looked at so far. So I'm just showing you where that one is. So that one could be tight or overactive, needs to be stretched. The VMO is the one which is likely to be underactive. So let's just have a look at that. So underactive would be medial gastrocnemius, the medial hamstring, the glute meads and mat, and the, and the, and the vastus medialis, the, otherwise known as the VMO. So if we take a look at that as well, that's the teardrop, which runs down the side of your kneecap. Now in uh, cyclists and uh, sprinters, they have a very predominant one of these because this actually helps with the tracking of the kneecap. Now, if this one is really atrophied, it, this is obviously the one which holds the knee in place as well as the fascia um, and ligamentous tissue. But if this one actually becomes very weak and small, it can actually, um, it's not good for the stability of the knee. Okay, so corrective exercise solutions for this. It's pretty much the same as the toe turning out. So if the toe turns out or if you've got knee valgus motion, usually the toe turns out because someone's trying to stop their knees from coming in and vice versa. So the exercise solutions are actually the same. So let's have a quick recap because we've got 10 minutes left. Check in the learning. Can you now uh, be able to recognize the common technical faults within Les Mills programs. We went through that slide where I had all of the different programs and on each of the programs I had actually written out what was applicable to that program and triple extension. Now we know where triple extension is within the program, we can actually analyze the squat pattern for ourselves to make sure that we're triple extending properly. And we can do that by applying corrective exercise solutions to keep you moving safely for as long as you're teaching or for as long as you're participating. So I hope that you guys learned something today. I uh, really enjoyed delivering that, even though it was in my front room and it feels really weird. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea in a minute. Um, but if you've got any questions, please do let us know. Send them to Charlotte, um, who is the little voice in the background right now from the marketing team and she will ask me. Cool, so we do have um, a question that's come through. Um, oh, basically, what's the best way for us to answer any questions after the webinar? Um, I would say send them through, through to LMUK, so the usual email address so lmuk.instructor at lesmills.com if you do think of any we can still answer them there or um if you if you do want to post anything on facebook um i don't know whether that would be a good option for you steve yeah i mean you, you guys can send me a message on facebook that's fine um I don't really want to be inundated with them, but you have to send them in some way. So um, I think there was quite a few people on this call today. Apparently there's 300 people registered. Um, so if you're out there and you're listening, uh, yeah, hit me up on Facebook, send me a message on Facebook. Uh, if I don't know the answer, which is very possible, then I will look it up or do my best to find someone who does know. Cool. So we actually do have a couple of questions now. Um, would you recommend a sports massage to relieve hammy tightness 
or would you use a roller? Um, uh, relieving hamstring tightness. Probably not to relieve hamstring tightness. Um, you would need, I would advise that you would do PNF stretches and that it, uh, massage doesn't always lengthen um, the proximal and the distal part of the muscle, um, but it, it feels nice and it obviously helps with the removal, removing of lactic acid and um, and yeah, in, in the same way as you might do self myofascial release, if it's a really good strong sports massage, um, it could actually undo some of the knots and the damage um, done by exercising. So yeah, I can't see, I, I definitely advise having a sports massage, but um, I wouldn't say that that was your stretch. Um, my knees turn out when I teach RPM. Would this be a weakness in the teardrop muscle you spoke about above the knee? Yeah, so what we need to do is you should need to do that single leg squat um, just to check it isn't a motor pattern. It could be because our legs are spinning very quickly. Um, if it isn't and it is uh, either a tightness or weakness, what I would advise that she does because um, she needs to sort that quite quickly doing something like RPM um, <coughs> is, to, is to do both. So just treat it as a tightness and a weakness. Strengthen the VMO, um, strengthen the, the glute need, um, and, and definitely stretch the gastroc um, and the gastroc and the soleus. So my advice to you, because usually the, the driver for a problem with squat pattern or um, triple extension, the problem is usually tight calves. Okay, so if your if your calves really tight, it actually it does it does let it does lend itself to the knee coming inwards. So there's two exercises that I would advise that you do, a gastroc stretch and a soleus stretch. They're two different stretches, and I would do it on a power plate uh, after exercise when your muscles are at its warmest, and then ease yourself into it in a progressive or developmental stretch. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've always squatted with my toes pointing out. This is now just habit. Am I best correcting this ASAP? Um, it depends on how far apart your feet are. So um, when I'm talking about squats, I'm talking about, for, for this purpose, we were talking about feet just outside the hips. If it's a, a wide, uh, what we call a wide squat and body pump or a wide air squat, um, otherwise known as a sumo squat, if we take the feet out that wide, then, then the hips are naturally going to uh, rotate outwards. And that's okay for them to uh, circumduct that way because... The, the, that's the way the hips work um, however if they are rotating when we're in a mid stance and the toes are starting to turn out then I would start to look towards those corrective exercise solutions yes thank you and just to mention quite a few people are asking about um, the slides and the recording we will send you a recording of the webinar later this week um, so just for anybody asking about that um, and then a few more questions. What if you can't do a single leg squat to begin with? Can you recommend any alternatives? Yes, um, that's a really good point. So uh, just hold on to a ballet bar or hold on to something or someone um, because it, I understand, yeah, the, the prime mover for that being the glutes and the quads. Maybe you don't have the strength to be able to do that. And, and most people can't do a single leg squat. And by single leg squat, you don't have to go all the way down. Um, it really is to just bend the knee down towards 90 degrees as close as you can. And before you get anywhere near there, you'll actually start to see whether you've got knee valgus or knee varus. So knee valgus is when the knee starts to fall inwards. Knee varus is when the knee starts to fall outwards. Um, but it isn't necessary for you to do the full range of movement. Um, you know, hey, I struggle to do them too. I know what you're talking about. Um, and then just a couple of questions around pump. Um, noting that we do push our toes out to the corners of the room in wide and wider squats. Mm -hmm. And is that okay? Yeah, no, no, as, as I just covered in the previous question, it's totally okay to turn the toes out as we start to go in a wider stance because that's what the hips naturally want to do. Um, and then 